the interactive segment of Daybreak, where viewers get to call into the program to, of course, contribute to topics of discussion, especially as it relates to national development. So today we talk about flooding and the prediction by the federal government of a possibility of a continuous five-day rainfall. So the federal government has issued a warning of heavy rainfall expected to last five days, which may cause flooding in 21 states and 123 locations. The National Flood Early Warning System Center under uh, urged communities downstream of the River Benway to evacuate immediately. Rainfall in these identified locations is expected to trigger flooding from September 4th to 8th, 2024. So these are the predictions. Of course, uh, what one would expect is actions from government in terms you know, of preventing an escalation of what we saw happen in states like Gombe, uh, Katsina, Yobe, Jigawa, and even unfortunately, Adamawa State, where we saw the devastating impact of uh, this flood. Please feel free to call into the program with your expectations of what the government should do in order for uh, Nigeria and Nigerians not to be impacted with the same situation that it had experienced already in the last few days. Reading further, the federal government had predicted days, five days of rainfall in 21 states and 123 locations. It also listed seven states that will likely be affected. Some of these states include Benue, Kogi, Anambra, Delta, Imo, Rivers, and also Bayosa. The flood prediction obtained on Thursday by uh, the, our correspondent uh, from the early warning flood system of the Federal Ministry of Environment also warned communities downstream of the River Benue to take caution. The federal government said the identified locations and environs would likely witness rainfall that may lead to flood from September 4th to 8, 2024. So the phone numbers are displayed on your screen. Simply make a pick and call into the program with your contributions of this development, expectations and hopes from the government as this early warning predictions has been made. What should Nigerians do? What should the government do? What are your expectations in terms uh, of how this would turn out? Some would describe this situation you know, as a continuum owing to the fact that it's been a regular incident every year, every year for the last, say, decade, with the most, of course, uh, that we witnessed in 2012, of course, talking about the Kogi State flood as at that time. But it has been a continuum, a yearly pre prediction and occurrence where we'd see uh, organizations such as NIMET, NISA, you know, doing predictions and uh, would also see state governments, unfortunately, some of them who would not take uh, any actions in terms of these awareness creations or relocation of residents in communities that are prone to this or even residents that have been residing in areas that have been designated as waterways. So what are your expectations of the government? What are your contributions in terms of what they should do and what Nigerians should do in order to prevent an occurrence such as this, which we have continued uh, to see on a regular basis in Nigeria. Now, the situation has become, you know, so dire in the sense that we only see reactions from the authorities in terms of distribution of palliatives and in terms of distribution of relief materials. Uh, the flooding happens in a certain location, and the next thing we see, the state management, the state emergency management agency or the national emergency management agency swooping into action to deliver these materials and try as much as possible uh, in order to minimize the casualties but that doesn't change the fact that the casualties are there already so what can be done in order to prevent this yearly occurrence this yearly occurrence of prediction waiting for uh, the disaster to happen and then reacting afterwards these are some of the questions and i believe we have uh, our first caller on the program now hello good morning welcome to daybreak interactive what's your name and where are you calling from hello good morning unfortunately we lost that call uh, the federal government also said the identified locations and environs like i said 
are likely to experience flood from the 4th to 8th uh, of this month. The states and locations are Adamawa State in Mubi, Shelling, Dimsa, Noman, Song, Wuru, Boki, Natubi, Mayo Belwa, Jimeta, Bajili, Banye, Farkumo, Abba Kumbo. And in Benue State, we have Udoma, Ubokpo, Ubokolo, Upaim, Otobi, Otupo, Mbakpa, Makudi, among uh, others. Uh, we have also in Bauchi State, Azari, Jamaare, Itas, Misau, Tafawa, Balewa. Areas in Kogi State include Ugwalawo, Ida, Ibaji, Wara, Omala, Basa, and Ajakuta. And areas in Bornu states that are prone to the flood are Biu, Meduguri, and Briel. Nasrawa state has Ado, Mararaba, Udeni, Rukubi, Ajima, and Odobo. In Gombe state, we have Nafada, Gombe, and Bajoga. In Kwara state, we have Kusubosu and Kayama. Jigawa state has Duse, Gomel, and Ringim. While Oyo state areas prone include Kishi. Other states are Kaduna, of course, uh, with Kash Kachia, Zaria, Kauru, and Jaji. Edo states include Ubochi and Agenebode. These uh, are some of the states that are prone. Of course, uh, the early warning prediction systems also added that uh, further to earlier alerts and due to rise in the water level of River Benue, communities downstream of the river from Makudi are advised to take caution. Also, the National Emergency Management Agency has advised states in the central and southern parts of the country to prepare ahead of potential floods that may soon affect communities downstream. It also advised the states to clear blocked drainages, construct temporary flood barriers, and evacuate from floodplains to safe, higher ground. Uh, NEMA gave the advice in a press statement signed by its head of press. Uh, the flood alert also advised, uh, advised further, stating that following the recent flood that impacted many communities across some states and rising water levels in River Benue and River Niger, NEMA advises states in the central and southern parts to prepare ahead for potential floods. Uh, and I believe we have our first caller. Now, good morning and welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, hello. good morning. Your name and your location, please. All right, unfortunately, we lost that caller. Uh, also, they added that the advice has become imperative to activate the state, local government authorities, and communities to take necessary actions to mitigate against the risk of flooding and to avoid the scale of losses recorded so far in areas that have been impacted, including loss of lives, displacement of communities, and significant damage to property and infrastructure. Uh, let's simply take some reports on some of the floods that, of course, have happened uh, in time past. Most recently, those that happened, of course, in Adamawa and in Gombe. If uh, the producers could just help us put on one of those reports so viewers get sort of a background feel of these developments. The disaster started on August 18 when the community experienced a heavy downfall that lasted for hours. Many farmlands were submerged with farmers unable to reach their farms to even ascertain the level of destruction. According to one of the farmers' leaders, it is estimated that more than 1,000 hectares of farmland have been destroyed by the disaster so far. You have seen for yourself how floods have destroyed more than 1,300 hectares of land. Most of us were just about to cultivate our crops before this disaster. We solely depended on farming to feed ourselves and the state at large. Considering the current state of the economy, we urge the government, especially the state government, to help us because we don't know what to do for now. 
I lost almost one acre of rice field where I used to cultivate more than 30 bucks. And unfortunately, it is gone forever. I don't even know how to describe what happened. However, I asked the government to look into the situation. According to community leaders, the magnitude of the disaster is alarming, leaving farmers in their need of support from government and individuals. Many farmers have been affected. And generally speaking, some one hectare, some two hectares, some three hectares. So we are at the receiving end of the trial by God. And um, I have that firm belief. That is why the federal government even has a ministry for humanitarian services. That is why we are making that passionate appeal to bodies like the NEMA, SEMA, and their related responses. Even on individual basis, people can assist. To come out on it, as I did say. Palmers, like Adam Saleh, who solely defended on rainy season's profit for irrigation farming, say the development is a setback to their planned food production next season, urging the government to ensure transparency while supporting flood victims. I used to grow rice, millet, maize and beans. When this flooding occurred last week, I lost three hectares of rice fields, one hectare of millet and one acre of maize. That is what I lost to flooding. Most of us are using what we can earn during the rainy season to cultivate more crops in the irrigation season. And now we lost everything. Therefore, the state government should be extra careful when distributing aid to ensure real victims benefit. While assessing the disaster, the state's emergency management agency, SEMA, a short of support for the affected farmers. Uh, actually, uh, the, considering the devastation, the magnitude of this flooding uh, cannot be overemphasized because uh, it affects over 1,000 hectares of land, as you can see. So, uh, on our own end, we are going to assess uh, to see that we, the, the survivors have seen the light of the day. According to the National Emergency Management Agency, plot has so far killed a total of 179 persons in 15 states and displaced 208,655 others in 22 states within this year, with 107,652 hectares of farmland destroyed. Right behind me is a rice field which covers at least uh, three to four hectares and being washed away recently by the flooding here in Hina. And according to the farmers, this included uh, rice plantation, millet, maize, and many varieties from Hina. Leamal to the local government area of Gombe State, Hassan Kohli, reporting for Trust TV. Well, there you have it, the situation in Gombe State. And of course, there are other states, of course, that have been impacted uh, by the flood so far. And this prediction, of course, by uh, the National Early Warning Systems only makes the situation more dire. States have already been impacted by the floods. There's Gombe, which you just watched. Of course, there's Adamawa State, there's Delta State, there's Jigawa State somewhere. Victims or persons, Nigerians, have already been impacted uh, by these floods. Perhaps you have a word or two to the government. Uh, perhaps you have uh, something to say in terms of recommendations to them on how they ought to act in order to prevent more Nigerians from becoming victims to these floods that have ravaged some parts uh, of the states. Now we go to Delta State, of course, to see the situation of the flood in those areas. <laughs> Um, cannot east now we are here in Malaysia. trying to clear every water channels the delta is in flood plain the place is seated you can see today we are here 
be collected your waste, your toilet waste, your kitchen waste into the public drain. Like I told you before, you've told Deltas that it's not going to be business as usual when you constitute users. Anyone that constitutes environmental users will face the full of the law. And we have our first call on the program now. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, good morning. Your name and your location, please. Unfortunately, it seems like the network is sort of not our friend this morning uh, due to reasons we can yet not yet fix, of course. Uh, while we try to get that in order, let's also take a look at another report this time from another state. It has destroyed many houses and many lives are gone. Victims of the flood describe the ugly experiences. Three local government areas in Adamawa State, Numan, Diamsa and Madagali have been severely impacted by the recent floods with Madagali bearing the brunt of the disaster, affecting 11 communities. The aftermath has been devastating, cutting off major road networks, and leaving commuters and goods stranded as residents continue to grapple with the significant losses the doubting tax of rebuilding their lives has only just begun. This thing is beyond state government. So we are calling on the federal government and the, and the world to please uh, come to our aid because uh, this is a total devastation. We lost everything, we lost our economic life and everything. Uh, so we are now in an emergency. In the wake of the crisis, both the state government and private individuals have mobilized to provide critical relief to those affected. Federal lawmaker Zakaria Yampa, representing the Michika Madagali Federal Constituency, has also played a significant role donating food and non-food items to help ease the suffering of the flood victims. It's a very bad situation that we have. Our people, you know, we are just recovering from the insurgents that have displaced us and now we have a flood that have come and made our people displaced again. And as you can see, the number of people that are here in our IDP camp uh, is so, so bad. The floods were triggered by heavy downpours from the Mandra Mountains. And residents are present for the possibility of further devastation. Gibson so Adigo, Trust TV News, Yola. All right, let's take this call now. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling from? Unfortunately, we lost that caller as well. We'll take a look at flood developments also from Adamar State. The floods were more devastating along the northeast axis, where a major artery between Kano and Meduguri has been cut off. The floods have also had devastating effects across the country on households, schools, bridges, and other means of livelihood. The governors are acknowledging the efforts of the federal government in mitigating the floods, but are asking for more support. An established governance structure is being put in place to ensure that the interventions will not be ad hoc, which is why the flood committee has been reconstituted. We need to provide more of poor security, and some of the farmlands are already submerged, and there would therefore be a need for collaboration between all the tiers of government to ensure food security. The need for planning, collaboration, and interaction to do that during the harvest time, because the harvest may not be as we invest it in terms of the bumper harvest that we are expecting. Monday will be the deadline for all the states of the Federation to submit detail of damages, including farms, schools, bridges that have been affected by the last flood, and Mr. Chairman mentioned that it will be taken into consideration for appropriate support to the various states. 
Meanwhile, before the commencement of the council's meeting, Vice President Kashim Shetima received the chairman of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill Gates. The philanthropist made a presentation to the council on strategies to totally eradicate polio in the country. They passed a resolution in the issue of polio eradication, which Nigeria has succeeded. It has eliminated wild polio virus, but there are remnants in a few states. Five affected states uh, and others have circulating variant polio viruses and uh, a task force a committee. Yes, we seem to have another caller now. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Hello, good morning. And unfortunately, we lost that caller as well. Uh, but we have another caller. Hello, good morning. Yeah, Welcome my name to is the Garibam. program. What's your name and where are you calling, calling from? from Garibam. I'm calling from Kaduna. So I didn't get the name. If you would repeat that, please. My name is Garba. calling from Kaduna. Garba from Kaduna. Welcome to the program. Please proceed with your contributions. Yes, I just feel like uh, what the government said about people evacuating is not, is not okay. Because before asking people to evacuate, you should have made uh, an alternative route for them to go to and uh, put in put uh, some kind of provisions in the sense that these areas as you know are always being flooded every every year it's not like this is the first time it's happening you should make arrangements in a way that people should not even build a residence around such areas and then um, create for now that it has even happened what they should do now is they should have an alternative route okay this is where people should evacuate to go to this place and evacuate and not just moving them and giving them a free land and say, okay, this is where we are giving to you. Sequently subsidize or make, they can make, they can arrange some housing plans for these people and tell them, okay, over so, so amount period of years, you make payment for this. And I think that should, that should, is not just asking them to evacuate just like that. All right, thank you very much, Garba, for, for the call. Garba there with his recommendations calling all the way from Kaduna State, talking about the government taking responsibility, especially for those living and residing around those flood plain areas, flood prone areas rather, and of course those staying by the banks or by the river banks, especially those rivers that are prone to, in one way or the other, cause flood but then we have another caller good morning welcome to the program what's your name and where are you calling from from hello good morning can i get your name again and your location my name is alhaji lawal aruna from argungu in kebi state alhaji lawal aruna from argungu in kebi state how is argungu this morning argungu is fine the sky is clear there is no any any sign of rainfall. All right, then tell us about the situation there in Argungu and also about the flood. Argungu, there is a flooding at the riverside. Mm. And before now, many houses have collapsed around the, the river area that is lower land. But right now, it has stopped small. But we heard that. Uh, Rainfall, uh, uh, another water flooding is coming mm. from, the, from the upper area, that is around the Sokoti area, where dams are releasing water, excess water. Mm. Okay, so, uh, Alaji Aruna, what did the government do when the first flooding happened? And those that were affected, have they been relocated? Yes, some villages near Arubungu are uh, shelter around follow club area where they are playing follow mm. but uh, some villages around the uh, area they are still residing in their broken houses to manage it mm. uh, oh. some relief materials have been given to them by the former governor and by the present governor as well and some of the elected uh, 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 official like the politicians mm. but it's not enough people are suffering in fact all right, Alaji Aruna, before I let you go, are you satisfied with the efforts by the government 
towards ensuring that these residents are relocated out of the area and also their response to the issues. I mean, we've seen them respond after the flood, you know, has happened. Are you satisfied with that approach? In fact, all the arrangements made are just temporary. There is no permanent solution to the problem of loading. Mm. If they wanted to do, they should find a place, give them allocation of land, and they assist them with the materials to build their own houses. Mm. That is one. Number two, they should be assisted with food stops because children are hungry. You understand? Indeed. Right now, those affected places, the children are, are not schooling because the school has been dissolved. Uh, uh, Reduced places like most has been occupied by water, and people are destabilized. This is the situation. All right, uh, Alhaji Aruna, thank you so much for calling all the way from Argungu in Kebi State. Do stay safe and have a lovely day. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, there you go. Those are the developments uh, from all the way from Arugungu. Alhaji Aruna says he's not necessarily comfortable with uh, the situation, but then he called on the government to do what is necessary in terms of assisting those who have already been affected in rebuilding their lives uh, again. But then, unfortunately, that's the much we can take in terms of these developments and, of course, in terms of the break interactive segment. Uh, due to the network situation, we were unable to get responders, more responders to contribute on the program. They kept calling in, but for some reason, the network keep ma kept making it impossible for uh, the respondents and for you, our viewers, to call in, which we sincerely apologize for. Hopefully next time, it'll be a better time.